Well to Christian, isn't he? Yeah, um, standing. St. Helens are way out in front on 40 points, 10 points ahead of second place Warrington, who have 30. Hull FC are still third on 26 points. Catalan have 24 points in fourth, and Wigan hold on to fifth spot on 22 points ahead of Castleford on points difference only, and by just five points. Um, Salford have 20 points in seventh. Wakefield have 18 points in 8th, then come Huddersfield, Leeds, Hull KR on 16 points, Broncos sit bottom on 14 points. Now, we don't want to throw ahead too much, but it's a good point to just have a quick chat about this bottom of the table situation and who's in trouble and who's who's uh, out of trouble and, and that sort of stuff. I would say Salford, probably just about okay now. Uh, so let me let me get it up and have a yeah. On twenty points, that's three wins and significant points difference better than yeah. the Broncos who are bottom. So the Broncos basically need to win four of their last six, seven, six, seven, seven, four of their last seven to um, guarantee it. Yeah. To, to overhaul Salford. So you say Salford are safe. Wakefield, they've got <laughs> they've got a few teams above them to play uh, in in the running at this stage. They might be worrying about it um, but I'm starting to feel like the Broncos have run out of steam yeah I think with the injuries and with the you know having to they haven't they haven't got the reserve quality to throw in there and well, they've ever... to really go and sign people so much yeah yeah because it's not that the, you know any, anyone playing for the Broncos has to move and play for them they can't just get someone who can travel across for a couple of months can they and you've also got the aspect of you kind of thinking you're going down so is it better to stay at the club you're at and maybe get a game here or there than go to a club that you might play for the next seven weeks but it's not necessarily going to enhance your contract options because you're going down potentially you're going to lose most of those games potentially I, I don't know I think they've put up a great fight much better than, than I expected I expected it to be a foregone conclusion by now and it definitely isn't that and this London Broncos side have surprised us before but yeah it's tough for me to see them getting enough points to overhaul those guys above them now because not they sure play only half come... a game every week and it's not enough at this stage of the season yeah, I mean, let's 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 bring up their um, their rundown, see who they've got. But this is going to take me a second. Well, they got Saints next week, and Saints will want to make sure that they make amends for what happened last time out. Their website is as appalling as it as usual. Um, so yeah, they've got Saints at home next week. Week after, they're at home again to Salford. That's why I've got to be looking at points. Um, then they're away to Cass, away to Catalan. <sighs> Can't seem to get much out of either of those, given I mean, you never know the Catalan, way those two... But Yeah. Yeah, But those true. two are and going to be way. looking for wins now. They're in a playoff race, and you know they've got a much higher calibre of player and a much better depth of squad, you would say. And then, then, then the two weeks following it are pretty horrible... Broncos against Leeds on the 1st of September. That's going to be quite something. Then, 8th of September, KR against Broncos. It could be all over by then, though, couldn't it? It could well be, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it could well be. And, then, and then Wakefield away on the last day of the season. Well, they've beaten Wakefield twice already this year, so that's a winnable one for them, so... If they're still in contention at that stage, they'll have hope, I would say. If they can win, if they can get to a point where winning those last two games keeps them in the league, um, I think that they should be optimistic. That Not optimistic, but hopeful. But then it's, it's the hope that kills you. It is the hope that kills you. Stat line of the week. David Mead, uh, one try assist, seven tackle boss, but hugely that 219 metres, that's a, a big... A big number to be putting up and much bigger than anyone else did this week around. Um, player of the week, I'm going to go off the games that I saw rather than just the ones that I've read about and seen highlights of. So I've got to go with Johnny Lomax uh, for me as the player of the week. I think he was absolutely everywhere. Not everything he did came off against Wigan, but he was always in a great position and always read what his players were doing around him. 
and you know managed to convince the sideline uh, touch judge that a forward pass wasn't forward as well. That's how strong his magic was in this game. Johnny Lomax is my player of the week. He was brilliant. Um, I would go for um, Danny Maguire for this uh, this week for the performance. Obviously, he's had that point to prove, but I just think he really he really bossed it and uh, drove us home. Yeah, highlight of the week. I mean, the best try I've seen this week was that Quinlan one with the, you know, hot potato game down there on the last tackle as well, running the ball. It's exciting. It's what you want to see happen as well from sides. You know, a bit of that. Uh, yeah. I'm going that one. Yeah, can't argue with that one. In the predictions, um, Super Room Fantasy League updates from last week, Alan was four out of six and Sarah was three out of six. So that gives Alan 68% overall, Sarah's on 56 and uh, me, I'm still on 66 and you're still on 57 because we didn't pick last week's games. But we will have a chance to change those figures this week ahead. In the Super uh, Alan is doing well there as well. He stays top of that table. Neil Ritson wears the yellow cap this week. So congratulations to Neil, who I think is a St. Helens fan. Make sure you get your fan reviews in on St. Helens matches, Neil. That would be fantastic. Uh, in the Fantasy League, Alan Bagley stays top. Andrew Curry, who's one of those in the in the top five chasing pack, he had the best weekly score. The... Um, Wales based Wigan Warriors fan isn't he Andrew uh, yeah. 704 was his score he beat me by two <sighs> but well done to Andrew great weekly score there um, thanks for everyone who got in touch with their fan views on, on this week make sure you check out the, the links on Twitter for the Google form for next week's games if you aren't a Twitter user but you want to get your match reviews in send us an email at Super League Pod uh, sorry Super League Pod at Google. Uh, no, hold on. I'll try that for a third time. Superleaguepod at gmail.com or get in touch with us through facebook.com forward slash superleaguepod um, and we'll give you the link that will you can use every week after every match you see and uh, send us your views in that way. But yeah, um, punctuation. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's pretty much everything. Time to move on to other results. Right then, time to move on to the other results section and starting with Championship Round 21, where it finished Sheffield 28, Dewsbury 22, Rochdale 0, Toulouse 68. Were they back at... Um, they were back at the Crown That where they should be? Yeah, yeah. they were, but um, it didn't help them because uh, one of... <laughs> a winger that I really want to see kick on, and I think he actually could be a Super League standard winger if he just just tried a bit harder to concentrate Ilias Bergal he scored six tries in this game I think that's pretty good going yeah uh, Toronto 22 Featherston 18 yeah we got a, a fan view in from Attila Murphy who said cheeky scamp Jack Bussey tried to tried to take a cheap shot on Darcy Lussick who proceeded to hammer him somewhere into next week yet only get 10 minutes extenuating circumstances it was Jack Bussey Hot- free pass <laughs> Hardcastle took uh, also took O'Brien out with a late shoulder charge in the second half. In short, typically committed physical performance by Leeds reserve side. TWP matched them. Not pretty, but a good character test passed. Yeah, I mean, Featherstone last year were the first side to go over and win at the Lamport Stadium. So for Toronto to hang on in this one is better than they did last year against Featherstone at home. Yeah, uh, Barrow 8, Lee 24. Batley 14, York 14. Well done to Batley for that one. Indeed. Uh, vital point for him. Bradford 34, Swinton 34 in the other draw. Well, and Swinton should have won this one. Um, Bradford scored very late to uh, take a share of the points. A vital point for both sides, though. Yep, and Halifax 40, Witness 10. Finally, Halifax win again, and the standings mean uh, from those results, the Wolfpack now have an 11-point lead at the top of the sit table with six fixtures left to play. York hold on to second on 29 points, one point ahead of Toulouse and Lee. Featherston on 26 points are in the final playoff side at the moment. Bradford have 25 points and Sheffield have 24 points as they chase the top five. Halifax have 18 points in eighth, or kind of, 
Purgatory, No Man's Land. Not really sure. They're not going down. They're not going to make the, the playoffs. Swinton now have 15 points. Batley have 13 and Witness have 12. Dewsbury and 12 have 11 points and a game in hand on those around them. Sorry, a win in hand on those around them because that game in hand must be against Rochdale. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Barrow in 13th have nine points. So actually that Dewsbury game in hand is most damaging to Barrow, you would think. And bottom place Rochdale on two points and minus 620 points difference look doomed to League One. Now that we know more likely that it's going to be a 14-team championship still in 2020. Well, who knows yeah. until it actually starts, yeah. Um, in League One, round 16, it finished Coventry 20, Hunslet 48. I was obviously at this game uh, at Rugby Football Club. Uh, quite an interesting uh, little venue, uh, sort of down next to, a, next to a gym behind a Sports Direct, which is quite a fun, fun little... Uh, little place did but you, um, um did you do any sort of like serious truthing on them about this web ellis bloke and how didn't really not really the case no i didn't feel that it was time to get old tony collins on them but um it was um it's a it's not as it was more it reminded me of white bank if it reminded me of anywhere it was that sort of quite small stand very close to the pitch um quite nice on a day like yesterday where you could stand out I was out on a balcony on the clubhouse but weirdly the clubhouse rather than being in the middle so it was looking down the the halfway line um, I think I was on the far edge and I was pretty much on the 20 metre line so you're in one corner really well there's a lot of grounds around that are a bit like that so um, it was an interesting vantage point so the camera angles would be, be quite fun as well watching that one back but uh, it was a really nice little little setup there uh, and really friendly people. We had quite a few locals come down and check us out as well. There's a family of six or seven that came in when I was on the gate, um, just um, came to find out what was what was going on. They were locals. And we had a kids' um, festival before playing Oxford Cavaliers, so it was quite fun to uh, see some of those guys and um, get, those, uh, get those playing. So we had under, I think it was under nines under 11s and under 15s playing Excellent. so uh, that was that was great to watch and uh, very enjoyable to see some of those those kids um, doing very well and enjoyable and some of them um, will be looking to move up before too long certainly some of the the older older age group they won't be long before they're they're knocking on the door of the the senior side in particular um yeah as for the game itself um, it was really a lot closer than the scoreline suggests. Yeah. Certainly, there was a point in the second half where it was twenty twenty-two, where it came back into it. Uh, some decent tries from again from Elliot Hall making his fourteen in fourteen. Um, it's fantastic. Reese Rance picking up another one on the wing, um, and then um, you know some decent performances. Obviously, um, it was Chris Barrett's hundredth game. So uh, we made a bit of a presentation for that, gave him a, a framed shirt after the game and um, made a bit of a fuss of him, which um, which was good fun. But, yeah, it was a bit bit frustrating because it was just in the inner grasp and then a couple of errors on, on in front of the Hunslet line when it just went begging and then we didn't get the ball back for 15 minutes. Yeah, just a 10-minute spell, uh, well, I, as I understand it, where they just kind of found lots of holes in the defence for a, a brief yeah. period and, and push the score yeah, out what it was but well done four, was for, uh, three, three players on debut you know and Harvey, Harvey Whitley definitely not a beer um, formerly of Leeds He's, I think he was in the the many um, he was one of the LUIs to be ditched at the end of last season yeah yeah uh, Dakota Wiley and, and co and um, yeah it was interesting game but, but frustrating again that was just um, close and Again, the performance just wasn't was better than that. That's just that scoreline suggests. Um, but looking forward to rugby in a couple, uh, three more games there. So that'll be uh, that'll be good. Nice, nice little venue and, and the, really uh, welcoming people as well. Is the medium to longer term ground future secured? Is is the is the big butt still going to be the the home next year, or is that up in the air? I think discussion discussions are ongoing as to what what happens. I think um, the ten year agreement comes to an end this year, 
So um, as to what happens, wait, they obviously wait haven't see. cared much about the agreement this year. If they've forced you to go and play out at the broad butt and now the uh, now the rugby butt. Yeah, there's lots of lots of um, discussions will be will be in place. I'm sure. Well, hopefully the Bears will get that sorted and we enjoy following their progress.